From the moment he made his big league debut, hell, even before he made his big league debut, Chris Bryant was a star. He had a ton of expectations and he only lived up to all of them immediately, winning Rookie of the Year and leading the Cubs to the postseason for the first time in seven years, went out and won the MVP award the next year, and helped the Cubs to their first championship in over a century, eventually going on to momentarily break the arbitration record of money made, so before he became a free agent, I mean, Bryant was a Cubs legend, and he was legitimately on track to be a Hall of Fame player. Now, yeah, of course, there was a long way to go, but he was easily one of the best all-around players in baseball. Yet, really ever since his Cubs career came to an end, Bryant has had one of the more dreadful drop-offs and regressions of any player of his caliber. He went from one of the more popular and talented players in the game to one of the more irrelevant and disappointing players in the game. His career theoretically isn't anywhere near over, but his career has fallen off so hard to the point where it almost seems like he's now starting from scratch. So welcome back to the channel, or welcome if it's your first time. Over 78% of my watch time is from people who aren't subscribed. So if you enjoy the video, consider hitting that like button and subscribing as it helps reach more people across YouTube and everywhere. It'll make me happy. Just like former Cubs general manager Theo Epstein and Chris Bryant made Cubs fans. When Theo Epstein was hired by the Cubs to help break their curse like he did with the Red Sox, he immediately revealed his five-year plan for the franchise. The team was going to rebuild for the next few seasons, and by 2016, they'd be good enough to win it all. A couple years later in the 2013 draft, Theo and the Cubs would draft Chris Bryant with the second overall pick. Bryant was such a high pick with massive expectations and for damn good reason, as he was quite literally the best hitter in college baseball. He led the nation in home runs in his junior season in 2013 by hitting 31, won several awards, and he was awesome. And leading into the draft before the Cubs selected him, Bryant actually thought he was going to get picked by the Rockies at number three, saying as such publicly years later, because everyone at the time was apparently thinking the Cubs were going to draft a pitcher, considering that was what they seemed to need most, and when they drafted Bryant instead, he said it seemed kind of like a letdown for Cubs fans. However anyone felt at the time though, it didn't end up mattering at all. All that did matter was Theo's plan and Brian's talent, all of which beautifully came to fruition. By 2015, Brian was deemed the number one prospect in all of baseball, absolutely killed it in spring training that year with the team, Although, yes, it's just spring training, but when your top prospect and the top prospect in the sport hits 9 home runs and 40 at-bats, that'll get people excited, even if it's in frickin' Little League. Despite the Cubs making the decision to have Bryant start the year in the minor leagues, the hype was insane. Chris Bryant, we need you now. There's no doubt that Chris Bryant is an incredible prospect. Chicago fans can be tough, Chris. Good luck with that. That's what, bud, they called you up. Now's your time. The wait is over. Adidas, who had signed Bryant to an endorsement deal, put up a billboard outside of Wrigley Field with Chris Bryant on it that said, worth the wait. So imagine being the number one prospect, you're killing it at the minor league level, so the expectations are off the charts, and you now have a billboard of yourself outside of Wrigley Field before ever playing a single big league game. No pressure. And, well, there literally was no pressure for Chris Bryant. At least there didn't seem to be. He did go 0 for 4 with 3 strikeouts in his first ever game after being called up on April 17th, but in his second game, he had a damn day, getting 2 hits, collecting his first career RBI, and walking 3 times. And from that point on, Bryant lived up to the hype. Other than striking out the most times in the National League, Chris Bryant had an awesome rookie season in 2015. Drove in almost 100 runs, hit 26 home runs, became an all-star, got MVP votes, and won National League Rookie of the Year, all while the Cubs as a team made the playoffs for the first time since 2008, winning the wildcard game in Pittsburgh and upsetting the Cardinals in the first round. They did end up getting swept by the Mets in the NLCS, but by 2016, Theo Epstein's perfect plan and vision literally happened. It was a five-year plan, and by year five, the Cubs won the World Series for the first time in 108 years. The second overall pick from the 2013 draft, Chris Bryant, won the National League MVP award. Things were just beyond perfect for the Cubs as a team, of course, but also for Bryant. Bryant had another fantastic year in 2017, and heading into 2018, he'd make history by breaking the record for a player in his first year of arbitration, signing for almost $11 million while all also being ranked the third best player in baseball by Sports Illustrated. 2018 was more limited overall because of left shoulder issues, but he still put up good numbers. In 2019, he was back in the All-Star game, hit over 30 home runs for the first time since 2016 when he hit almost 40, just overall really good numbers. 2020 was 2020 and Brian had a really bad season. 
but again, it was 2020. So I'm going to look at the 34 games Bryant played in that year with a grain of salt, especially because he immediately became an all-star again in 2021, having a really good first half with the Cubs. Unfortunately, the Cubs as a team were not really good. They were really bad, trading away the majority of their championship core all across the league, and that included sending Bryant to San Francisco to join a surprisingly great Giants team. And it's from this point forward where Bryant basically kind of just like disappeared off the face of the planet. You got Chris Bryant, the Cubs prodigy, 2015 Rookie of the Year, 2016 MVP and World Series champion, and third overall best player in the game according to Sports Illustrated, now joining a first place San Francisco Giants team. This was going to be big, right? Well, no actually, and it's not because Bryant was really that bad or anything. They played him all around, mainly at third base and left field, also getting some time in right and center, and Bryant hit pretty well. Nothing crazy, and he only played 51 games, but you'd still think he was more significant and noticeable on a 107 win Giants team. But nope, I personally don't remember a single thing Bryant did with the Giants, and I don't think many do, even Giants fans. It doesn't help that they won all those 107 games just to lose to the Dodgers in the first round. But off to free agency, Bryant would now go, and he'd sign with the most random team possible, the Colorado Rockies, for $182 million over seven years with him getting the left fielder role. So, I guess poetically, Bryant ended up back where he thought he was originally going to be drafted. Although, poetic just doesn't seem like the right word to use. It's like Bryant was saved by the Cubs in 2013, saved from having to go to the Rockies, but now he's with them and it's not a good thing. The Rockies historically are not a good franchise. They also are a fairly newer franchise, but still, not much success to go off of, and the team currently doesn't look any better. I will say this though, shout out to Rockies fans, you all are amazing, seriously. Coors Field is a beautiful ballpark, and those fans pack the place. They averaged over 32,000 fans in 2023 to see a 59-win Rockies team. That is absurd. You as a fan should be paid at that point, but it's just cool to see people still go and have fun, even with the Rockies being terrible. And Chris Bryant being on the team hasn't done anything. He's just gone even more unnoticed. For starters, he simply just hasn't played much. Since signing with the team, he's dealt with plantar fasciitis, a bruised heel, back problems, and a broken left index finger when he was hit by a pitch. So take a terrible Rockies team that's only seemingly getting worse, have Bryant barely play, and when he does, he's not doing much, and it's just insane to see how far off he's fallen. Chris Bryant was one of the biggest stars in baseball, by far one of the best players, and now is on the most irrelevant team doing irrelevant things. Just wild. I don't think this is truly the end for Chris Bryant, though. I genuinely do feel he can get back to what he was in Chicago. I mean, he was already a great hitter, now put him in Coors Field, a park that's famous for being so hitter-friendly and having the ball fly like nowhere else? Sign me up. It seemed like a good fit originally, but the injuries obviously have just halted anything good from happening. And like I said, when Bryant did play, last year in 2023, he was awful. Bryant, who the Rockies plan to be their first baseman this season, recently spoke about how he feels and thinks, moving forward at a Rockies Fan Fest event at Coors Field, saying that he feels good and healthy and is eager to, of course, just get back out there with a clear mindset. And that's basically how it has to be. He's starting fresh. Nobody cares about what Bryant did with the Cubs. Definitely not Rockies fans. He's been nothing but a disappointment the last couple years. He knows it and also knows it's time to really get going with this new chapter of his career, a chapter that just hasn't gotten going yet with his absence the last two years. Will Chris Bryant ever get back to his MVP form or at least somewhat close to it? Or will he continue just going into irrelevancy and separating himself from the player he was with the Cubs? Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you soon.